Episode 1. The Blueprint for Success Imagine, if you will, stepping into a room filled with people. It looks like any other room, and the people inside are engaged in a variety of activities. Some are talking, others are working on laptops, while a few are simply lost in thought. Despite the variety of activities, they all share a common factor, a desire to achieve something. And yet, if you were to ask them how they plan to achieve what they want, you might get a variety of vague responses. I want to be rich, one might say. I want to be successful, another would chime in. Yet, how many have a concrete plan to reach their goals? In that room, you stand as someone with a distinct advantage. You understand that the desire for success must be backed by a solid plan. It's like cooking a complex dish. You need not just the ingredients, but a recipe. A series of actions to turn those raw components into something extraordinary. Think of a six-step plan as that recipe. So, let's journey through this. You have a goal in mind. You're unlike the person who says, I want plenty of money. You are specific about the amount you desire. The difference might seem trivial, but it's anything but. A sailor who sets out without a destination is less likely to reach a favorable shore. Specificity guides your ship, steering you away from the infinite directions you could go wrong. But your compass is set to more than just the amount of money. You have considered what you're willing to give in return. There's a saying that nothing in life is free, and it applies to success as well. You're not just throwing a fishing line into the sea, hoping to get a bite. You're navigating, investing effort, and time to reach the fish-rich regions. That's your something for nothing. You also set a date for your goal's realization. It's not Sunday, it's a day on the calendar. A timeline provides urgency. Remember the time you had to catch a plane? You knew the exact minute you had to be at the gate. It wasn't some vague future, it was 6, 35 p.m. on a Tuesday. That urgency drives action. But urgency without action is like a car with no wheels. You might have the fuel, but you're not going anywhere. Thus comes the action plan. What are the steps to reach your goal? If you have $10,000 to make, are you selling a product? Investing? Offering a service? Your action plan is your roadmap. Even then, you could forget your plan or lose sight of your goals. This is why you write it down and read it daily. Each day, you remind yourself of the goal, the deadline, and the plan. This isn't merely an exercise in memory. It's an affirmation that aligns your entire being with your goal. The sixth and final step ties everything together. Belief. As you read your plan, envision yourself reaching your goal. Belief isn't wishful thinking. It's an essential part of your reality. Remember the last time you were certain of something? That certainty directed your actions, your thoughts, and maybe even the outcome. Belief in your success is the glue that binds all the elements of your plan. In following these steps, you're doing more than just wishful thinking or aimless wanting. You're manifesting your desire into a concrete reality. It's not magic, it's the outcome of a well-executed plan. As you experience success, it's not just a boon for you. It's an affirmation of a process that others can emulate. It goes beyond you, it becomes a universal formula for transforming desire into reality. So now, let's look back at that room full of people. How many do you think have a concrete plan? You stand there, not merely as someone with a goal but as someone with a plan, a blueprint for turning desire into reality. You're not hoping for success, you're planning for it. This isn't just your success story, it serves as a testament to the power of a well-laid plan backed by desire and belief. The lesson here is that desire alone is like a ship without a compass. It might be in the sea, but it's going nowhere in particular. Desire when aligned with a plan, becomes a force of nature, turning obstacles into stepping stones and challenges into opportunities. It is this precise form of directed, planned, and well-executed desire that becomes an unstoppable force. Now, imagine what you can achieve when you set your desire ablaze and arm it with a plan. Go ahead, the world awaits your story. Episode 2. The Transformation of Thought into Reality In your daily life, you're no stranger to thoughts and desires. They visit you often, like unexpected guests knocking on the door of your mind. 
Now, let's explore what happens when you invite them in and make them feel at home, so they become more than just passing thoughts. The essence here is that thoughts and desires, when treated with attention, can turn into something real and tangible. Imagine for a moment, you're the CEO of your own thought factory. You have a staff of emotions, a few key principles to abide by, and a whole lot of raw material in the form of thoughts and desires. Your main task as CEO is quality control and efficient production, turning those thoughts into something real. Let's start with the emotion of faith, the cornerstone of your operation. In your factory, faith isn't just a word, it's the belief that what you are producing, be it positivity, wealth, or love, will come to life. You instill this belief in every department of your factory. Think of faith as the manager who walks through every section, making sure all parts are aligned and focused on the end goal. The next big player is the principle of auto-suggestion. This is your factory's art and amp winking and laughing department, responsible for training your subconscious mind. Just like a scientist in a lab coat, auto-suggestion takes the blueprint of your desire and works tirelessly to find ways to bring it to life. Repetition is the tool here. Just like doing anything repeatedly makes you better at it, repeating positive affirmations helps in refining your desire into a well-crafted plan. You might notice that some thoughts come attached with strong feelings, almost like they're supercharged. These thoughts are your VIP products, ready for immediate action. When a thought is supercharged with emotion, it's like adding a turbo boost to a car, it just goes faster toward realization. These are the thoughts you want to prioritize in your factory line. Okay, so the operations are in full swing now. But it's not all smooth sailing. You have to watch out for disruptive elements like fear and doubt. They are like factory saboteurs, sneaking in and causing production delays. If not checked, they can shut the whole thing down. Here, the self-confidence formula works like a security system, keeping these negative elements in check. You have all the settings dialed in. Faith is managing operations, auto-suggestion is in the lab, and emotionalized thoughts are on the fast track. What happens now? You'll find that your factory doesn't just produce tangible goods like wealth or a new job, it produces a new you. This new self is more self-reliant, optimistic, and ready to tackle challenges. Essentially, you become the person capable of achieving your desires. Isn't that something? You started with thoughts, intangible, ephemeral. You applied principles like faith and auto-suggestion, mixed them with emotion, and out came a new reality. This transformation from the intangible to the tangible is similar to the alchemy of turning base metals into gold, except here, you're turning thoughts into reality. So, what do you do now? You keep the factory running. Because thoughts never stop coming, desires never cease to exist. The beauty is, you now know the process. You can keep creating, keep transforming. Your life becomes a living testament to the power of your thoughts. You realize that the key to shaping your destiny was always within you. It's your ability to turn thoughts into things. In essence, you become a master of your own thought factory. Your life, then, isn't just a series of random events, but a well-crafted narrative that you direct. You become the architect of your fate the author of your life story. The principles you've applied aren't just methods, they become a part of who you are. You're not just thinking, you're manifesting. And there's your transformation, from being at the mercy of your thoughts to being the master of them. From here, the possibilities are endless. What you've achieved in your personal factory can be scaled, shared, and applied to larger life projects and community endeavors. After all, the principles remain the same only the canvas gets bigger. In summary, your thoughts have power, a latent energy that, when harnessed correctly, can transform not just your world but the world around you. And it all starts in the thought factory of your mind. Keep it running smoothly, and you'll never look back. Episode 3. The Power of Auto-Suggestion Episode 3. The Power of Auto-Suggestion Close your eyes for a moment and take a deep breath. Now. Picture yourself standing in front of a mirror. It's not just any mirror, it's a special one. It reflects not just your physical appearance but also your thoughts, your dreams, and your desires. This is the mirror to your subconscious mind. You might notice that the image is a bit blurry, 
obscured by doubts, fears, and old habits. But what if you could clear that image and command your subconscious mind to align with what you truly want? Let's say you've always wanted to start your own business. In your day-to-day -day life, you've taken small steps, like reading books on entrepreneurship or brainstorming ideas. But somehow, you feel stuck, as if a hidden force is holding you back. That hidden force is your subconscious mind. It's a powerful tool, but often, we're not using it to its full potential. You're the hero of this story. Your quest. To unlock the untapped power of your subconscious mind using auto-suggestion. This is your silent journey. No one else needs to know you're on it, but it's a life-changing quest, nonetheless. As you embark on this journey, you'll encounter obstacles. First, there's skepticism. Can auto-suggestion really make a difference? Then comes the challenge of consistency. It's easy to say affirmations for a day or two, but the real work lies in making it a habit. Finally, the true battle is with your own emotional commitment. The subconscious mind responds to emotion, not just words. If you merely recite statements without feeling, the mirror stays cloudy. In the realm of cognitive psychology, the subconscious mind is like a sponge. It absorbs not just information but also emotions and impressions. By using the principle of auto-suggestion, you're communicating directly with this sponge-like part of your mind, instructing it to absorb your positive intentions and emotional fervor. Over time, this process can become as natural as brushing your teeth or tying your shoelaces. The small yet consistent act of repeating emotionally charged affirmations can lead to major changes in your life. There comes a moment, an epiphany, where the repeated act of positive auto-suggestion clicks into place. It's like finding the right frequency on a radio. The static noise clears, and you hear the music, your own internal symphony of positive thoughts, emotions, and intentions. From this point on, the actions you take seem to flow naturally, almost effortlessly. Now, as you proceed, remember that you have choices. Will you read your affirmations aloud daily, as suggested? Will you emotionally invest in them? And most importantly, will you act upon the ideas and inspiration that come to you? While you work on mastering auto-suggestion, you'll also find that you're becoming more attuned to other areas of your life. You'll become more mindful, more present, and perhaps even start discovering other tools and techniques for personal growth. Over time, you'll find that your attitude towards challenges, failures, and setbacks changes. They no longer hold the power to derail you. Your mirror image becomes increasingly clear, reflecting a person aligned with their goals and dreams. The hero's journey ends where it began, in front of the mirror. But you're not the same person you were when you started. You have harnessed the power of auto-suggestion to change not just how you view the world, but how you interact with it, make decisions, and pursue your dreams. The mirror now reflects this new you, a person who knows how to command their subconscious mind to create a life they've always wanted. Even after you've reached your goals, the journey isn't over. The practice of auto-suggestion becomes a lifelong habit, a continually renewing source of strength and direction. Imagine applying this tool in different areas of your life, in relationships, health, or any new venture. The possibilities are limitless. The subconscious mind is one of the most powerful tools at our disposal. Yet, often, we leave it untapped or let it run wild with negative thoughts and fears. Through the consistent practice of auto-suggestion, charged with emotion and intention, we can actively program our subconscious minds for success. This is not magic, it's the psychology of the self at its finest, available to anyone willing to put in the effort. You are the master of your fate, the commander of your soul, and with the tool of auto-suggestion, you're also the sculptor of your own subconscious. Take control, be consistent, and watch how you can transform not just your thoughts, but your entire life. Episode 4. The Power of Organized Knowledge Imagine being in a room filled with books, articles, and lessons from life experiences. All these are sources of knowledge that you've gathered over time. This room represents your mind, and each piece of information is a tool you've acquired. But having a room full of tools is only the first step. The real power comes when you can organize these tools and use them effectively. You don't have to look far to see the value of organized knowledge. 
Think about a carpenter who has a toolbox. If all his tools were just thrown in there without any order, it would take him ages to find the right tool for the job. But when his tools are organized, he can grab what he needs and get to work right away. The same principle applies to knowledge. An organized mind can access what it needs when it needs it, enabling you to take purposeful action toward your goals. In this journey, you're not just someone who's gathering information for the sake of it. The real quest here is turning that potential energy, your accumulated knowledge, into kinetic energy, action that leads to results. Sure, you've heard the phrase, knowledge is power, but it's not complete. Knowledge is potential power. To make it actual power, it needs to be applied, and for it to be applied effectively, it must be organized. You may have felt at times that despite having all this information, things are not clicking. You might even wonder why, after attending college, reading countless books, and even taking specialized courses, you're not where you want to be. It's like being in a maze, and even though you've studied the map, you still find yourself at dead ends. That's because the map is in your hand, but not in your mind. It's information that has yet to be organized and tailored to your unique journey. Now, think about clearing up that room filled with books and information. Start placing the books on shelves categorized by their relevance to your goals. Suddenly, you don't just have a room full of books, you have a library. In this newfound clarity, you can form actionable steps, creating a well-thought-out plan. And once you have a plan, what was once static becomes dynamic. Now you're not just knowledgeable, you're powerful. The realization is simple yet profound. The difference between a room full of disorganized books and a well-cataloged library is the same as the difference between potential and power. The moment you begin to organize your knowledge, the fog lifts. You can see the path from where you are to where you want to go. This clarity isn't just mental, it's actionable. It doesn't just stay in your mind, it reflects in your actions. On this journey, there are small choices you make like choosing to continue your education informally even after formal education has stopped. These choices might seem minor but contribute to your larger quest. You might also find others along the way, role models, mentors, and peers, who have chosen to organize their knowledge too. Their methods might be different, but their core principle is the same. Organized knowledge leads to effective action. When you started, you were an amateur, a gatherer of information. Now, you're a master, a strategic applicator of knowledge. That's the transformation that has occurred. You've not only gathered specialized knowledge, but learned how to filter, organize, and apply it in the real world, tailored to your personal and professional needs. The end of this journey is actually a new beginning. You've realized that organized knowledge is not a one-time task, but an ongoing process. You're now a more effective individual, better at problem solving, and most importantly, empowered to reach your goals. You've seen the power of organized knowledge. But remember, the world keeps changing, and new information will continually come your way. The key is to keep organizing, keep planning, and keep acting. You are in a cycle of perpetual growth. This organized approach isn't just for your current goal or project, it's a lifelong method. Whether you're learning a new skill, starting a new job, or even entering a new relationship, the principles remain the same. Organize your knowledge, make a plan, and act. The takeaway from this journey is not just personal, it's universal. The method of turning potential into power through organized knowledge is a principle that anyone can apply. The difference between success and mediocrity often boils down to how effectively one can organize and apply what they know. Remember, knowledge is just the starting point. It becomes true power when you take the time to organize it and align it with your goals. That's how you turn potential into actual, kinetic energy. That's how you turn knowing into doing. That's the power of organized knowledge. Episode 5. The Power of Imagination and Desire Imagine you're in a workshop, one that's filled not with hammers and nails, but with something more powerful. Your thoughts. In this workshop, your imagination is your most important tool, your dreams are your projects, and your desires are the blueprints. It's a place you visit every day, perhaps without even knowing it. But you do know that this is where you shape your reality, carve your experiences, and construct your life. 
What you may not fully appreciate is that your imagination and desire could be your greatest assets or liabilities, depending on how you use them. Your quest is simple, yet profound. To understand how the powers of imagination and desire can be harnessed to transform your life. In your workshop, you have two kinds of imagination. Synthetic and creative. Synthetic imagination is like your regular set of tools. It can rearrange existing ideas into new shapes. Creative imagination, on the other hand, is like a magic wand that has the power to bring new ideas to life. The struggle you face is determining how to use these forms of imagination effectively. Do you simply rearrange existing elements in your life, or do you dare to introduce something completely new? And where does desire fit in all this? It's your fuel, but how do you make sure you're not just running in circles? Desire turns out to be more than just want or need, it's the energy that brings thoughts to life. Just like in nature, where energy transforms into matter, your desires can manifest into reality. But for this transformation to occur, your desire must be strong. It must burn with intensity, urging you to action. This is the juncture where creative imagination is activated. So, you realize that having a strong desire isn't enough. It must be specific, focused, and aligned with a purpose. When these conditions are met, the energy from your desire propels your creative imagination into action. Your workshop becomes more than a place for tinkering, it becomes an innovation hub where dreams are converted into reality. As you think about this, you realize that you have choices. Do you stick to the familiar comfort of synthetic imagination or do you venture into the realm of creative imagination? Do you allow your desires to be vague wishes or do you crystallize them into focused ambitions? While you're considering this, you also begin to understand that imagination and desire aren't just personal tools, they're universal energies. The same laws that enable you to transform desire into reality also govern the conversion of a single cell into a complex human being. The universe, in its infinite wisdom, has been using these principles all along. The shift is subtle but powerful. You understand now that you're not just a passive user of your workshop, you're its master craftsman. Your desires aren't just thoughts, they're energy. And your imagination isn't just daydreaming, it's a creative force. As you come to this realization, it becomes clear that your life is the most important project you'll ever work on, and it deserves the full utilization of your imaginative faculties and the energy of your desires. This is not the stuff of chance or luck, it's the result of conscious choices and actions. You step back and look at your workshop with new eyes. It's not cluttered or confusing, it's a space of endless possibilities. It's where you will spend your days, shaping your world one thought, one desire at a time. What you have learned here is not just a one-time lesson but a lifetime practice. The workshop of your mind will always be there, and your task is to keep it focused and purpose-driven. Your tools, imagination and desire, will remain, waiting for you to use them effectively. Your workshop, like your life, is a work in progress, but one thing remains constant. The energy that fuels it all is your desire, and the tool that shapes it is your imagination. By mastering these, you can truly become the architect of your own destiny. Success is not an accident, it's a creation. And the blueprint for that creation resides in the workshop of your mind, waiting to be discovered, understood, and applied. Don't just exist, create. Episode 6. The Power of Intentional Planning Life often feels like standing at a crossroads, with many paths stretching out in front of you. You have a suitcase full of desires, but they're abstract, like wisps of dreams you're afraid will disappear. Now, imagine you can solidify those dreams, make them tangible, and map out a route to reach them. That's the power of intentional planning, a journey that begins in your imagination and ends in the reality you've crafted for yourself. This isn't just about financial planning or career moves, it applies to any area of your life where you crave change or improvement. Whether you're looking to improve your health, learn a new skill, or build deeper relationships, the journey is similar. You have to decide what you want, plan how to get it, and then execute that plan. The steps might seem simple, but each has its own set of challenges. Your quest, should you choose to accept it, is to go from the realm of imagination to the land of reality, to make your abstract desires concrete. You won't be alone, you can form your own mastermind group, 
an alliance of individuals united by a common goal. Each member of this alliance brings something unique to the table. While you'll face logistical issues, like creating a foolproof plan, the harder battles will be ideological. You might wrestle with doubt or fear of failure. You might wonder if you're deserving of the success you seek. These are natural obstacles on your path, and to bypass them, you'll need to fortify your mind with positivity, decisiveness, and a clear sense of purpose. Begin by clearly defining what you desire. Sketch out your goal in fine detail. Ambiguity is the enemy of accomplishment. Next, form your mastermind group. Meet regularly to refine your plans and ensure everyone is in sync. Foster a climate of mutual respect, cooperation, and positive reinforcement. It's during these meetings that you might experience epiphanies, moments where a previously obscure part of the puzzle clicks into place. As you put your plans into action, you'll discover the value of these insights, and your initial plans will become more sophisticated, more foolproof. The choice is yours. You can decide how deeply you wish to engage with your plan and your mastermind group. The more energy and dedication you invest, the more you stand to gain. Your mastermind group is a resource not just for expertise but also for fresh perspectives. You might find that solutions to challenges can come from unexpected places, revealing secondary benefits and hidden depths to your original plans. As you progress, you'll find your ideology shifting. You'll go from someone who hopes to someone who knows. From someone who dreams to someone who achieves. This isn't just about reaching your specific goal, it's about evolving into a more decisive, more confident, more capable version of yourself. Once your plans have been executed and your goal reached, take a moment to reflect. You've traversed the difficult path from abstract desire to concrete reality. The sense of achievement you feel is your right, earned through hard work, perseverance, and the valuable insights gained through cooperation. After the goal is achieved, the journey isn't necessarily over. The wisdom you've gained is a tool you can use for future endeavors. Your mastermind group, if it was effective, can be a lifelong resource. The concept of intentional planning is universally applicable. It's a framework you can apply again and again, refining your methods each time for even greater success. Intentional planning isn't just a strategy, it's a lifestyle. It's the conscious decision to live your life with purpose, steering your own course rather than being tossed about by the winds of circumstance. Take control of your life. Plan with intention, act with confidence, and you'll turn your abstract desires into concrete realities. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single, well-planned step. Episode 7. From Procrastination to Prosperity. Procrastination. We all know it too well. It's like that friend who overstays their welcome, eating into your time and productivity. Ever noticed how it always shows up when you have important decisions to make? It's not just annoying, it can be a serious roadblock to achieving your goals, whether those are personal or financial. The opposite of procrastination? Making decisions. Quick, clear decisions are the key to moving forward. Let's consider this. You've got a to-do list as long as your arm. You could spend time overthinking every single task, debating which to tackle first, and ultimately doing none. Or, you could make a quick decision to start with the first task on the list and dive right in. Which approach is more likely to lead to a productive day? Procrastination and lack of decision-making often lead to failure. This isn't an opinion, it's based on analyses of people who haven't achieved their goals. It's the silent problem that eats away at your capacity for action. You can read all the self-help books in the world, but if you don't make a decision to act on what you've learned, nothing changes. Imagine, for a moment, you're at a swimming pool. There are two kinds of people here. Those who hesitate at the edge, dipping their toes, debating whether to jump in, and those who make a beeline for the diving board, spring off, and make a splash. Now, think of that pool as your life. Making a decision is like taking that high dive. It might be scary, but it's the only way to make a splash. Studies have shown that people who are successful, especially financially, share a common habit. They make decisions promptly. They don't waver or second-guess themselves. This doesn't mean they're reckless. It means they have a clear idea of what they want and go after it. 
and even if they need to change their decision later, they do so thoughtfully. Ever heard the saying, loose lips sink ships? It's particularly true when it comes to your goals and decisions. If you talk too much about your plans without acting on them, someone else might beat you to the punch. Decide. Act. Then speak. Think about the founding fathers of the United States. Faced with oppression, they had two choices. Continue to live under tyranny or fight for freedom. Their decision to fight didn't come lightly. They knew they risked their lives by making that choice. Yet their decision was so powerful that it galvanized an entire nation. Similarly, your decisions have the power to transform your life. It wasn't just a decision that led to the birth of a nation, it was the foundational principles backing that decision. If you want to make life altering decisions, you need principles to guide you. These can be anything that gives your life meaning, like faith, persistence, and planning. People who know what they want and make decisions to get it are the ones who succeed. Period. Indecision is usually a learned behavior, often picked up in our educational system that rarely encourages decisiveness. Decide what you want, plan how you'll get it, and act on those plans. The world has a habit of making room for determined individuals. Definiteness of decision requires courage. Much like the founding fathers risked their lives for freedom, you risk your economic freedom when you make decisions to change your life. But remember, the best things in life are often on the other side of difficult decisions. Riches, success, and prosperity don't respond to wishes, they respond to decisive action. You must have a plan, backed by desire and persistence. Only then will you break through the barrier of procrastination and seize the life you've always wanted. The power of decision making is not just a strategy. It's a necessity. The decision to act is the first step toward freedom, whether financial, personal, or emotional. Your life is shaped by the decisions you make. The good news is that this is something entirely within your control. So, why not make a decision today to step out of procrastination and into a life of action, wealth, and fulfillment? The moral here is clear. The key to a prosperous life lies in your ability to make clear. Quick decisions. Whether it's deciding to take a new job, invest in your education, or even what to have for lunch, your decision making ability is the steering wheel of your life. Grab hold and drive yourself towards success. Episode 8 The Triumph of Persistence. Inside you is a desire for something more, though you might not yet fully understand what that is or how important it can be. This moment plants a seed, a tiny and almost invisible aspiration that begins to make you restless. However, doubts cloud your mind. You wonder, is my dream achievable? What if I fail? But a flicker of desire remains, a nagging feeling that you could be doing more, that you could be more. The world around you seems to magnify your fears. Society often places limitations on our abilities, consciously or unconsciously planting the seeds of doubt and undermining the strength of our willpower. You realize that persistence is not a trait you're born with, it's something you cultivate. Like a muscle, the more you exercise it, the stronger it becomes. This clarity fuels you to take the first step toward your goal, irrespective of the obstacles. Maybe you start small, researching, or planning, but the important thing is that you start. This newfound commitment is an act of defiance against your earlier doubts and society's limitations. You also understand the value of surrounding yourself with positive influences. Maybe it's a supportive friend or a mentor, someone who can provide not just emotional support but also practical advice. This companionship and guidance help you stick with your path, even when the journey gets tough. After repeated efforts and overcoming setbacks, you notice a change. Not just in your circumstances, but in you. You've become more resilient, more committed, and most importantly, more confident in your ability to achieve what you set your mind to. The trials you've faced and overcome have instilled in you a newfound sense of purpose and self-worth. The journey may be long, and you may still have miles to go, but you've acquired something invaluable, a sense of agency over your own destiny. Even if you haven't reached your final goal, the person you've become in the pursuit is a victory in itself. The concept of persistence will continue to be relevant in all aspects of life whether it be personal or professional. Just as you needed it to take the first step, you'll need it to take the thousandth, 
in the millionth. There is no replacement for persistence. It's the bridge between a mere wish and the realization of a goal. It's the tool that can carve your path in the world, no matter the resistance you face from external circumstances or even from within yourself. So the next time you stand on the precipice of a significant decision, remember, it's not just about that moment. It's about setting into motion a chain of events that could lead you to become the best version of yourself. A version that's not just a dreamer but a doer, not just a wisher but a willer. And that's a transformation worth striving for. Episode 9. The Mastermind Principle You find yourself mulling over the concept of the Mastermind Principle. This idea isn't just a fleeting thought, it's like finding a hidden room in a house you've lived in all your life. You realize you don't have to go it alone in your endeavors, whether you're aiming for financial stability, a fulfilling career, or even personal growth. You see the incredible power that can arise when you gather people with different skills and perspectives, all focused on a shared goal. Let's dive into what makes this principle so important, so transformative. Persistence and faith are two pillars that can build a strong foundation. Without faith, persistence is just aimless struggle, and without persistence, faith is nothing more than wishful thinking. Power becomes the product of these two forces, helping you translate your plans and desires into reality. You need this power to build anything substantial in life, especially something as concrete as money. So how do you go about acquiring this elusive power? It's all about organized intelligently directed knowledge. This can be drawn from different sources, infinite intelligence, accumulated experience, and experiment and research. But, a straightforward way to acquire and apply power is through the mastermind principle. This involves surrounding yourself with individuals who are not only skilled and knowledgeable but are also committed to a mutual goal. In such an environment, each member amplifies the efforts of the others, creating a synergy that couldn't exist in isolation. But this isn't just about economics or mutual benefits in the physical world. It's also about the less visible but incredibly potent forces at play. When two or more minds come together in a spirit of harmony, a third, invisible force comes into existence, a force that can be likened to a third, collective mind. This is the psychic phase of the master mind, an untapped reservoir of potential and power that most of us remain unaware of. Now consider this. Energy is the building block of everything in the universe, from galaxies to the thoughts that are running through your mind right now. When you sync your energy with others in a spirit of harmony and shared goals, you tap into a level of thought energy that far exceeds what you could achieve on your own. This energy is not just theoretical, it leads to tangible, real-world results. Look at successful people, like Henry Ford or Andrew Carnegie, their fortunes weren't built in isolation. Their achievements were, in many ways, the products of their mastermind groups. However, there's a dual nature to this principle. You could either find yourself on the positive side, which carries you towards wealth and success, or on the negative side, which drags you towards poverty and failure. This flow is influenced heavily by your thoughts and emotions. Positive emotions propel you to the side of the stream that brings success, and negative emotions do the opposite. If you find yourself caught in the negative flow, remember, you have the ore to steer yourself towards the positive. Don't underestimate the power of these concepts. Whether you find yourself in good times or bad, remember that these principles can serve as a beacon. You must act on them for them to benefit you. Reading this and nodding won't change your life. Applying it will. So, gather your mastermind group, fuel your journey with persistence and faith, and navigate the waters of life with the newfound power you have acquired. You see, the key takeaway here isn't just a theoretical understanding of the mastermind principle. It's about the transformative power it holds for anyone willing to apply it, including you. This could very well be the turning point you've been waiting for, propelling you towards the life you desire. It's time for you to take that step and discover the incredible power that a mastermind group can offer. Episode 10. The Alchemical Transformation of Desire Imagine, for a moment, you're a driven individual, fueled by desires that often pull you in different directions. You find out about the concept of sex transmutation, a way to channel your deep-seated desires into life-changing ambitions. This is not about suppressing natural instincts, rather, it's about controlling and utilizing them in a balanced manner. 
desire is powerful. In many of us, it's a swirling force that can sometimes lead to chaos. But what if you could harness this force for something extraordinary? The concept of sex transmutation suggests that you can. The potential benefits of channeling sexual energy are threefold. 1. The perpetuation of the human race. 2. The maintenance of physical and emotional health. 3. The transformation of mediocrity into genius. Our focus here is on that third point. The transformative power of desire. By redirecting the energy you'd typically invest in physical gratification, you can unlock a different kind of satisfaction. Think of the individuals who've achieved remarkable things. They're often people with strong desires, but, crucially, they've learned to direct those desires toward constructive ends. The human mind is sensitive to a range of stimuli, tend to be exact, that can kick it into higher gear. From the desire for sexual expression and love to the drive for fame or money, these stimuli act like a kind of mental fuel. The trick is to use these stimuli in combination, harmonizing them so that they work for your advancement, both spiritual and material. This alchemical process also involves the use of a sixth sense, which is really just a term for tapping into higher forms of creativity. This creative imagination is the bridge between finite human thoughts and infinite intelligence. When you're open to ideas coming from beyond your usual conscious thoughts, you're engaging with this sixth sense. In other words, you're practicing a form of modern alchemy. So, how do you go about it? First, you stimulate your mind to operate at higher than average intensity. Use the stimuli that work for you, whether that's music, love, or ambition. Then, focus on the aspects of your life that are already successful and well defined. Visualize the parts that need work as already being complete and successful. Hold that thought, then let it go. Allow your subconscious to take over, trusting that it will work its own form of magic. Many people don't stumble upon the powerful art of transmutation until their 30s or 40s. Around this age, you'll find that nature starts harmonizing your emotional energies like love and sexual desire. If used wisely, this newfound harmony can act as a powerful engine for achieving incredible things. Now, consider how this quest has transformed you. The energy that once consumed you now fuels you. You found a new harmony between your physical desires and your life's ambitions. With your mentor's guidance, you've become a master of your own mind, capable of extraordinary achievements. What you've learned isn't just a one-time lesson. It's an ongoing practice. Just as you wouldn't expect to stay fit without regular exercise, you can't expect to maintain this newfound mastery without ongoing effort. The art of transmutation isn't a destination, it's a journey, one that can continue to bring you extraordinary benefits. The transformative power of desire isn't just for a select few, it's a universal potential. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, or what you've been through. With the right knowledge and application, you can harness this power for good, propelling yourself to heights you never imagined possible. Episode 11 The Power of the Subconscious Mind Imagine you're sitting at the controls of the most powerful and complex computer in the world. Your mind. It's your central command, your motherboard, always on, running in the background. The challenge is, most people never really get the instruction manual for this incredible device. We're all capable of using it, but we're often not clear on how to harness its full potential. Let's understand the untapped capabilities of this inner computer, the subconscious mind. It's always on, tirelessly working day and night to process the information you feed it. Think of it as the software that runs behind the scenes while you go about your daily life. In the operating system of your subconscious mind, two key programs determine your outcomes. Desire and faith. They're like the essential software applications that need to be open and running to achieve your goals. Desire is the driving force, the passion that fuels your programs. It's the why behind every action you take. Now, while desire sets the stage. It is the element of faith that acts as the catalytic converter. Faith here isn't religious belief but a conviction, a deep-rooted assurance that your desire will manifest into reality. Within this software environment, emotions play the role of plugins or extensions. Positive emotions like love, enthusiasm, and hope enrich the experience, enhancing the capabilities of your core programs, desire and faith. In contrast, 
Negative emotions like fear and doubt can act like bugs or malware, hindering performance and causing crashes. Just like any computer, your mind is susceptible to external influences. But you have the capability to act as your own firewall. You decide what information gets in and what should be blocked. So, the key is to create a strong firewall that only lets in positive impulses and blocks out the negative ones. Your subconscious mind is powerful, but it doesn't operate in isolation. It connects to a vast network, a sort of universal cloud storage, if you will. Some people call it infinite intelligence or the universe. This is where the extra processing power comes from when your local resources, your conscious thoughts and efforts, seem insufficient. APIs enable different software applications to communicate with each other. In human terms, think of prayer as your API for connecting your subconscious mind to the infinite intelligence. The effective use of this API isn't just about sending requests, it's about the quality of the emotional data you're transmitting. Simply put, praying with faith and positive emotion sends a strong, clear signal. The effectiveness of your mind's operating system will manifest in your day-to-day -day life as your real-world outcomes. Are you reaching your goals? Do you feel fulfilled and at peace? These are your performance metrics, indicating how well you're utilizing your inner computer. The recognition that your subconscious mind is this powerful, always-on device, capable of connecting to a vast network of intelligence can be a game-changing realization. It's an ideological shift, moving from feeling powerless to understanding that you have a significant degree of control over your life's outcomes. Knowing that your mind is this amazing tool doesn't mean you've mastered it. Mastery is a lifelong process. But every update you make, every positive program you install, enhances your life and gets you closer to your goals. The principles don't change. You'll use the same processes for future applications continually optimizing for better results. The untapped potential of your subconscious mind is your gateway to incredible possibilities. Like any powerful tool, it can either build magnificent structures or create utter chaos, depending on how you use it. By understanding its capabilities and learning how to direct it effectively, you open doors to infinite avenues of growth, success, and fulfillment. It's a journey, a fascinating one. So take control. Master your inner computer, and watch as your desires manifest into your reality. Episode 12. The Mental Broadcasting Station Your mind is like a two-way radio station, both broadcasting and receiving thoughts. You may not realize it, but you've been broadcasting your desires and fears to the universe, and likewise, receiving information all the time. Ever get a hunch or an intuition? That's your mental radio at work. We all want to reach our goals, right? To be successful and happy? Understanding how to harness your mind's power is like learning to operate a complex machine. A little confusing at first, but invaluable once you get the hang of it. Think about the last goal you set for yourself. Perhaps it was getting a promotion or becoming more fit. Now imagine having the manual to your mind's machinery, giving you the know-how to tap into the mental broadcasting network reaching not just your subconscious but the universal energies that can help you achieve that goal. But here's the catch. Not all thoughts are created equal. Emotional intensity acts like the amplifier in this broadcasting network. Without passion, desires are like weak signals, hardly making it past the station. How can you be certain that your desires are broadcasted loud and clear? The trio of subconscious mind, creative imagination, and auto-suggestion is your answer. Your subconscious is the DJ, spinning the records of your deepest desires. Your creative imagination is the antenna, capturing and sending signals, while auto-suggestion is your personal sound engineer, fine-tuning the broadcast to perfection. So, how to get started? Simple. You don't just say, I want a better job. Instead, you visualize yourself in that role, you feel the emotion of being successful and you use positive affirmations to reinforce this desire into your subconscious. That's your signal, boosted with emotional intensity, now broadcasting at full strength. While this is a guide, remember, you're in the driver's seat. You choose the goals, the desires, and the emotional intensity. Take a moment to reflect on what you truly want. Got it? Good. Let's broadcast it. Science may not have caught up entirely with this notion, 
but many who have tried these principles swear by them. Our understanding of the brain and its capabilities is still in its infancy. Yet, pioneers in cognitive psychology have started to validate the power of the subconscious mind and the role emotions play in decision-making. What you previously considered mumbo-jumbo may now appear as a manual to operate your mental machinery. That's the shift, the transformation that comes when you are ready to accept and experiment. So you broadcast your desires, fueled by your emotions, and guess what? You start receiving too. Ideas. Hunches. Opportunities. They all start coming your way, as if you've just tuned into a new frequency that was broadcasting these all along. Taking a step back, you'll notice that you're not the person you were before. You're now someone who understands the capabilities of their own mind, someone who doesn't just wish but actively broadcasts their desires to the universe. The best part? This isn't a one-time thing. Life is a series of goals and challenges. And now that you've mastered the art of mental broadcasting, you're equipped to face whatever comes your way. In a nutshell, your mind is more than a repository of memories and skills. It's a dynamic, powerful broadcasting station. And the better you become at operating this station, the more effective you become in navigating life's complexities. So the moral here is clear. Don't just be a passive listener in the radio station of life. Become an active broadcaster, amplify your signals with emotion, and tune into the frequencies that resonate with your desires. Episode 13. The Sixth Sense in Action. Imagine you're in a car approaching an intersection. The light is green. Your instincts tell you to slow down, even though you have the right of way. Just as you ease off the gas, a car speeds through the red light, narrowly missing you. This gut feeling that prompted you to act. Call it intuition, the sixth sense, or a guardian angel. It saved you. It's an instinctual knowing that defies logical explanation. The sixth sense, the elusive thirteenth step in Napoleon Hill's philosophy for success, is often mystifying. It's a mental and spiritual faculty that kicks in after mastering other life principles. This sense provides timely warnings about danger and hints about opportunities. It's the channel through which the human mind can connect with universal intelligence. To develop this innate power, you need to understand your deepest desires. Inward reflection, self-analysis, and setting purpose-driven goals are essential steps. Hill's text indicates that people usually discover this hidden skill around the age of 40 or later. This is often because spiritual understanding and intuitive faculties require years of contemplation, meditation, and serious thought. Real-life instances confirm that the sixth sense can come alive in emergency situations. For example, you get a gut feeling, a hunch, that prevents a potential accident. This is the sixth sense working in conjunction with heightened emotional states to give you almost supernatural reflexes. This is practical evidence of how this elusive sense can protect you. Fear is the greatest obstacle to activating the sixth sense. Whether it's the fear of failure, criticism, or loss, these negative emotions cloud intuition. Developing faith through focused desire and positive auto-suggestion is the antidote to fear. When you elevate faith above fear, your sixth sense becomes more accessible and functional. People engage with this knowledge for different reasons. Some are motivated by the acquisition of material wealth, while others seek a deeper understanding of themselves and the universe. No matter the motive, the sixth sense can be an indispensable ally revealing truths that are hidden from the five physical senses. Revisiting this concept repeatedly allows you to assimilate its full essence over time. With each reading or experience, your understanding deepens, enabling you to tap into this internal guidance system with greater efficacy. Whether it's avoiding an accident or making a pivotal life decision, the sixth sense provides insights that the other senses can't. It requires no special skill to activate only an open mind and the willingness to listen to that soft voice within you. It's this inner voice that often knows best, that sees the unseen, and that can guide you to make choices in your best interest. Keep an open mind. Listen to your inner voice. It may just be your sixth sense trying to tell you something. Whether it's a warning to avoid danger or a nudge towards an exciting opportunity, this internal guidance system is not just fluff. It's very real and can be honed to your advantage. The sixth sense is not supernatural, 
it's supremely natural but often underutilized. It's a sense that coexists with your other faculties and can be developed with mindfulness and practice. So, next time you get a gut feeling, don't brush it off. Pay attention. Your sixth sense might be trying to guide you. Episode 14. The Art of Self-Expression. You wake up one morning and realize that the world seems a little quieter than usual. Not the kind of quiet where you hear birds chirping, but the kind where your own thoughts seem amplified. You recognize that your voice, your means of self-expression, has been silent for far too long due to the fear of criticism. You decide that today is the day you're going to start using your voice, not just for yourself, but to inspire others. Criticism can often feel like a chain that holds you back. It keeps you from applying for that job, sharing your artwork, or even just speaking your mind. The fear of what others will say can be paralyzing, and it's something most people can relate to. Without explicitly saying it, you make a silent pact with yourself. You will overcome this fear. You start to realize that this isn't just about speaking out. It's a quest for freedom, from self-doubt, from hesitation, and from holding yourself back. Conquering the fear of criticism isn't straightforward. First, there are the external voices, the naysayers, the doubters, those who might ridicule or belittle you. Then, there are the internal voices, the self-criticisms, the what-ifs, the worries that perhaps the external voices were right all along. These are your ghosts of fear. You take control of your thoughts. You remind yourself that you have the power to choose which thoughts to focus on and which to discard. You realize that most criticisms are subjective opinions, not absolute truths. Your mind, you discover, is your control panel for navigating the fog of fear. Then come those pivotal moments, the times you actually do put yourself out there. Maybe you post your art online, give a presentation at work, or stand up for someone else. You're met with mixed reviews, but the sky doesn't fall down. You realize criticism doesn't have to be a life sentence. It can be an opportunity to grow. All along, you had a choice to stay silent or to speak. You realize that this choice, this power, has been yours all along. It may have felt like a risk, but the real risk lies in never trying, in keeping your voice silenced by fear. As you become more comfortable with facing criticism, you realize that it's not just your voice that's growing stronger. Your confidence, your sense of self worth, and even your capacity for empathy. All these also grow. No longer do you feel trapped by the fear of what others might say. You know now that your voice has value, that your self-expression can be a beacon for others. You're free to be you, and that freedom is infectious. You find yourself in situations where you would have once stayed silent, and you speak. You share your thoughts and your ideas, unburdened by the fear of criticism. You become an advocate for your own freedom of expression. You notice something amazing. The more you express yourself, the more others seem inspired to do the same. Your bravery has started a ripple effect, showing people that they, too, can overcome their fears and use their voices. The skills you've learned aren't just about conquering one fear, they're life skills. Whether it's a business meeting or a family discussion, your newfound confidence and ability to handle criticism will serve you well. The ability to overcome the fear of criticism is not unique to any one person. It's a universal challenge, but also a universal opportunity. The world needs more voices, more ideas, more self expression. When you conquer your fears, you give others permission to do the same. Your voice can be the start of something big. You have the power to not only change your life, but also inspire those around you. Don't let fear hold you back. Your voice matters.